Okay, hey guys, so this video is going to be about um, the overall immigration experience, uh, but then more specifically, we'll talk about Irish, German, and Italian immigrants. Um, and the homework, make sure that you are finishing that immigration reading worksheet. It's not very long and it should be attached um, to this Google Classroom post. So immigrants, we get the job done. I have this uh, shameless plug for Hamilton. Um, go watch it. It's on uh, Disney Plus. Um, just a really good immigrant wow. story. You're going to hear my dog barking sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Um, so our first quote is from Emma Lazarus, and it says, Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning uh, to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, the tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Um, this was from the New Colossus. Um, written by Emma Lazarus, that woman right there. And if this sounds familiar, that is because it is also inscribed on the base of the Statue of Liberty, which we've had some debate in my classes. You can go up in like the little crown thing. You can see how there's little windows. Um, you can go up there and look out. You do have to make a reservation in, in months in advance though, just an FYI. But this is at the base of the Statue of Liberty. What's significant about the Statue of Liberty is that it was welcoming immigrants into the country, like especially if they were going to Ellis Island, um, this would be, this statue is the first thing that they would see um, when they entered, uh, got closer to Ellis Island. So um, really, really significant that this uh, quote is on um, the Statue of Liberty. And then we have this quote. This one says, enough, enough. We want mo no more of ye immigrant from a foreign shore. Already is our land overrun with toiler, beggar, thief, and scum. That's from Prescott Hall. Um, Prescott Hall, with his college buddy, um, formed what was called the Immigration Restriction League. And that is pretty self-explanatory. But basically, um, they were really lobbying Congress to pass anti-immigration legislation, okay, barring immigrants from coming here, putting restrictions on immigrants. Um, so he is quite possibly the opposite of Emma Lazarus, what Emma Lazarus was saying. And with that in mind, um, this will be our quote for the entire unit. Um, according to history, has America's immigration philosophy been that of Emma Lazarus or Prescott Hall. We'll learn about that the whole um, unit. And at the end, we'll kind of make our decision uh, based on what immigration, um, the ideas and the opinions are on immigration are now compared to these quotes. So what is nativism? The term nativism is the policy protecting the interests of native born or established citizens against immigrants. It's this idea that if you are very much established in one country, you are trying to protect the rights and interests of um, your country, right? Um, we see kind of toxic nativism right now, um, especially, I think it's great that people are very, very proud to be here and be an, an American, but there's a certain point where you have to kind of reevaluate what your motives are, um, especially when talking about nativism and who belongs here and who doesn't. Um, we see a lot of nativists um, saying that we shouldn't let anybody in uh, to the country. And I just don't think um, that's right. You know, I don't think um, people uh, should be restricted from our country um, because of our need to protect our interests. Um, I think we'll learn more about how over history and over time, different groups of people were restricted because of nativism, because of something like this. So this little graphic thingy, if I can pull it up, um, is shows the uh, numbers, I don't know if you can see it, I would look at it on your screen if you can pull up the slides with this, but I think it's really cool, it shows how um, the different 
dots equal different people from different countries coming over to the United States. You see this screen going over and it's coming from this way, right? Um, and I just think um, it's really cool down here. It shows the top countries that were um, immigrating at that time, right? That timeline, the number of uh, people migrating and then the timeline down here. So I would take a closer look at that on your screen. I just think it'd be better for you to view it. But I just wanted to show you just a little bit of um, this cool like illustration of immigrants coming to the United States. Go to the next thing. Okay. So. Um, Okay, the melting pot, the idea of a melting pot. You've probably heard this term from Schoolhouse Rock, um, if you ever watch any of those videos. Um, but this idea uh, that America is a melting pot uh, basically means a, an original melting pot in life is like uh, used in metal making, I believe, where they're melting a bunch of different metals in one pot. Um, but in this sense, uh, calling America a melting pot is... Um, mixing different people of different uh, cultures and mixing them together and creating this country of um, differences, like people coming from all over the world. Um, and what people try and paint that as is this beautiful sunshine and rainbows, everything's fine picture of when people come over here they're automatically accepted and that's just not realistic people are not automatically accepted when they come over here we'll see that in the slides following this in the next video right too um it's not that simple um i we wish it was right um but unfortunately with the idea of a melting pot um sometimes when we are mixing different people of different races and cultures um, they end up abandoning their native languages and customs in the process. So uh, we just want to keep that in mind that even though they are blending into what would be the American norms, right? Um, they're then losing a part of their identity um, by abandoning a lot of their languages and customs. Okay. So do you guys, does anyone know what this is? Okay, this map. This map shows Pangea. Um, and I put that up there because I think it's cool when we talk about immigration, um, what immigration could have looked like, right, if Pangea hadn't have, um, the tectonic plates hadn't have separated Pangea, um, would have been a lot simpler, right, to move up and down this, okay. Um, the Naturalization Act of 1790, this basically said any white person of good character, um, and uh, they had to be living in the U.S. for two years, could gain citizenship. And the problem with this is that um, this idea of good character, that definition, could change from person to person, right? Um, it's, it's very vague. Um, one person's a, a de like definition of good character um, could be different than another person's uh, definition of good character, right? So um, it, you've got that, like, weird... Uh, very um, vague definition criteria that you're basing this off of. Another problem was that it, in 1790, the census was conducted, and out of 39 million people, one in five were of African heritage. One in five, okay? So you have a majority of people not gaining citizenship because they are not white, um, and they're denied those basic protections of voting, fair trials, um, things like that. So um, that is just one of the first um, anti-immigrant um, pieces of legislation. So why do people come uh, to the U.S.? These are just some reasons why a majority of people come. We'll talk about different groups in a minute, but I just wanted to read these. Um, to live with family members, better educational opportunities... Um, to find work, religious freedom, better working conditions. Um, so a multitude of different reasons why people come to this country. Um, but it's important to remember that 
still, some immigration was not consensual. We talked about the uh, slave ships uh, bringing over enslaved Africans um, to this country um, against their will, right? Kidnapping them from their families. So it's important to note that all, not all immigration, um, not all immigrants were willing to come to North America, to the United States. Um, so I encourage you to talk to your parents, talk to your family members about what your ancestry was uh, or is, right? Where your parents or your grandparents or your great-great-grandparents, um, their families came from. Um, I know um, I did a Ancestry.com like test where you send in your saliva through the mail. That was super interesting, the stuff I was able to collect with that, but I was also really, really able to collect a lot of information from talking to my grandparents and stuff like that. It's just really cool to know your family's history, so I really encourage you to do that. Um, and talking about uh, these immigrant groups, the first two people, or first two groups of people to come after the War of 1812 were Germany and uh, the Irish. And before we talk about them, I need to talk about the Know Nothing Party. Um, in 1849, um, the Know Nothing Party was founded, and it was this first uh, anti-immigrant political party um, that was formed, similar to the Restriction League, um, but this was a political party formed of people who, whose one of their sole purposes was to pass anti-immigration legislation. Um, reasons why the Germans came to the United States, they came for political safety, they came for religious safety, okay, religious freedom, and they also came um, for safety from the German army, right? We see some countries, um, some people in some countries, escaping their own governments, um, restrictive uh, laws, okay? Um, maybe they don't want to be drafted into the army, maybe there's a mandatory draft. Um, we see that in a lot of cases, and this is why um, some of the Germans come over. This is just a photo of um, an anti-German poster, or not really anti-German, but it's, it really exhibits that um, idea of nativism, and I'll read it. To German and Austro-Americans, Austro refers to Austrian, if you've ever seen The Sound of Music, they're from Austria, um, but you notice these are crossed out, okay? Uh, men and women of German and Austrian blood, we ask you to remember that this is your country now. You owe no allegiance to any king or kaiser, but you do owe everything to this great America that is giving you your jobs, your homes, your businesses. This country has given you a greater chance uh, for happiness and success than any other country on the globe could give you. Okay, so you see that kind of inflated ego um, that Americans are starting to have, right? Um, these immigrants are not a part of their home country, right? Erasing their cultures. They are uh, Americans and they owe everything to America. Um, we are the, the Americans are the reason for these guys' happiness, right? That kind of toxic nativism. Um, here we see another political cartoon. Um, one of the biggest barriers that immigrants had to face were the literacy tests. Um, so we see that um, political cartoons, as you'll see in this whole unit, are all about symbolism. Okay, so um, these are pens, right? Books, Uncle Sam representing the United States. Okay, this barrier between these immigrants and coming into America. So why did the Irish um, come to the United States? They came for religious freedom. Um, but they also came because of economic issues and wanting to find work. Um, some came over for being indentured servants to the British or serving the British Army. Um, but probably the most uh, familiar reason why um, these Irish immigrants came over and why actually my family came over was because of the potato famine. Um, there was a disease going around the potato crops. Um, the potato crops start to fail and they come to the United States looking for uh, farmland, looking for work. Um, and then we see this um, political cartoon. This was not uncommon to see in different shops. Um, help wanted sign, but no Irish. Um, no Irish need apply. Um, this was not uncommon for Irish immigrants to come over looking for work and then um, not be able to find work because of um, 
signs like this, people barring them from even working, right? And also, side note, I think this looks like Will Ferrell. Prove me wrong. Tell me that does not look like Will Ferrell. Anyway. Um, I have this trailer for Brooklyn. Feel free to watch it um, on your own time. I'm not going to show it here. Um, but it's a really, really good movie. It's uh, You can rent it for three ninety nine on Amazon Plus. So, don't worry, I'm not going to show it. Okay. Um, and then in the next video, I will talk about more of these groups, but right now I'm going to focus on the China, uh, on the Italian, Italian immigrants. So these are the countries that are coming over uh, to America between 1880 and the early 1900s. The Italians, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Austrian-Hungary um, immigrants, and um, uh, Russian immigrants. Okay. So Italian immigrants, uh, they are coming over here um, to escape violence um, and poverty, natural disasters uh, and diseases in their own country. What's interesting is more than 4 million Italians actually come between 1880 and 1920. Um, and the U.S. often, this is not, this is not an uncommon theme, the U.S. Um, often blamed uh, immigrants for taking their jobs. We see that still today, right? Um, this fear that these people are going to come in and take all these jobs. Um, this is not the only group that they do that to, but they do do it to the Italians. Um, and we see them depicted in political cartoons as kind of dumb and stupid, right? Um, they are also um, prone to violence from the KKK. The KKK targets different immigrant groups, and one of them is the Italians. Um, and I uh, just just a lot of violence toward them and just rude uh, depictions, which we'll see with other immigrant groups as well. Um, in this one, this was the uh, incident where the chief of police in New Orleans was um, accusing uh, Italian immigrants because the police, or not the police, sorry, the mayor was accusing Italian immigrants because the police chief was found shot dead. Um, and without any evidence, the mayor is accusing these Italian immigrants. He uh, ends up, they end up rounding up um, 19 uh, just random Italian immigrants and they put them on trial and then they put them in jail. Um, and then with, uh, after this, okay, even before they're released from jail, a angry, an angry mob goes to the jail and drags out 11 of these people, innocent people, takes them to a field and lynch, lynches all of them, okay, hangs all of them. So we see this unnecessary violence towards these innocent immigrants, um, and th there was no evidence put against them, right? They did not have a fair trial, okay? So we see this, this idea, this nativism idea manifesting itself through these violent acts, right? Okay, in the next video, we will learn about uh, some of the other groups that we saw in this uh, slide, and then also we'll learn about Ellis Island and all that stuff too. We'll see you in the next one.